Hi, welcome to a new video. Today we are looking at hybrid inverter from Root Auto Electric. This inverter comes with communication options like BMS for lithium battery communication and Wi-Fi communication for mobile app. Above that we can see the input and output connections, then also the battery connection. This inverter comes with 5 year warranty and a BIS certificate. So we can easily use this for availing subsidy on MNRE projects like PM Surya Ghar. You can see the technical specification of this inverter and I have already added the detailed usage manual link in the description. These are the items that comes with the inverter. You can see air vents on both sides of this inverter and connections will be on the bottom side and on the right hand side you can see the power switch. This inverter comes with 50k price range and 5 year warranty plus BIS certificate. If you are mentioning this video you will get a discount. It comes with Wi-Fi adapter for mobile app monitoring. We can just install the Smart ESS app. We just need to use this cable for connecting this dongle. We cannot directly connect since it's RJ45 connection. By removing the side screws, we can access the internal components of this inverter. We can just have a look at the main board. Uh, this is similar to the board that we are normally seeing on Chinese inverters. Actually on this side, we can see the LED and display connections. Then on the main board, this is only a single main board. Uh, you can see the quality of components and the connections. This plastic sheet and the two bottom fans will help this inverter to keep temperature under control. I hope you got an idea about the internal components quality of this inverter. Also, please don't forget to like, share, subscribe if these videos are helpful for you. Also, please leave uh, your feedback in comments. We can access the connectors by just removing these screws and uh, you can see the similar model in GoTo and different other Chinese manufacturers. Also, please leave me your valuable feedbacks in comments. Uh, here you can just see the AC main connections, AC in and then mains out and the secondary output this inverter has two output then you can see the fans then the battery connections uh, there will be a small separator between the positive and negative terminal then the solar connections positive and negative we can just use a 6 or 4 square mm cable since it support higher voc these fans are temperature controlled so it will not be that much loud just need to remove this screw and clean this filter once in a while because that will help a reliable operation of this inverter because actually dust accumulated on this filter will reduce the intake air quantity that may leads to overheating of components. Since it's for testing purpose I am just using this 16 ampere socket for taking output. Also I have not used uh, terminals in these wires. When you are using please use proper terminal and proper output connection methods. Uh, right now I have just used an insulation tape to prevent uh, touching of these wires on that metal part. Since this inverter support higher VOC that like 500 volt so we can just use a 6 or 4 square mm wire that will be enough for this purpose. If you are using proper terminals there will be no need of this insulation type that I have used. Uh, we just need to connect uh, AC in and main out just for this testing purpose. Uh, I am not going to connect secondary load. If needed that we can do later. Actually uh, you can see the both connections are connected. I have just connected earth uh, from a common point. Always make sure that you have properly connected body earth when using high frequency inverters because actually they otherwise you will get shock from this body. If you are thinking that any portion is missing uh, just let me know in comments we can add that on the second part of this video. We need to connect the battery and solar. Uh, first I, we can try without the battery that means the batteryless operations. Now we have just connected all the connections. Uh, battery is connected but using a breaker it's disconnected then the solar connection is connected. On the right hand side you can see there is a warning that is that specifies that do not connect the battery after the utility is turned on. That means if you are interested in connecting the battery please connect it before turning on the grid. If you have any doubt related to this connection or the specification of this inverter, you can easily check that details on the detailed users manual. Uh, I have already added the link in the description. You can just check on that Google Drive. Always make sure that you have taken proper precautions when playing with electricity or dealing with high volt systems. Please note that I have not turned on the utility and also the battery breaker is off. So right now I am just trying to test what how it will work with batteryless operations. Now I am going to turn on the solar breaker only so we can see these details in screen when it's getting energy from solar. Right now it's showing BP because battery is not connected. Battery is connected but the breaker is off. So when we are turning on the inverter it will give output to the connected load. Right now I have not connected anything. I am just trying going to turn on the inverter. After turning on we can 
see the lines to inverter and from inverter to home load. Uh, using these lines, we can identify that inverter is turned on. We can identify the following things from the screen. Uh, initially, the solar panel voltage, 131 volt from solar, and then 239 or 230 volt is the output. Uh, then we can see BP because battery is not present. That's why it's showing a small voltage. BP means battery is not present. Then uh, the connected load at the top. Now we have connected only one bulb and right now I am just going to add a heavy load. Uh, right now the breaker is off so it will not get any power from battery. Uh, what will be happening at the overload situation that's what I am trying to find out. Uh, this purple light shows that it's purely working on solar. Now I am just going to add a heavy load. Right now it can uh, cannot handle that much load so it has been tripped. So you can see the inverter is off. So I am just going to turn off that load. That extra load is an induction cooker that takes around 1200 watts. From the current sunlight, uh, solar panels can provide only 9000 watts. That's why it has been immediately tripped. After removing that load, it has been now working back to normal. Right now, just only one bulb has been connected to output. We can enable or disable this auto restart function from settings. It's always recommended to use battery when using hybrid system even though uh, battery is optional because actually when situations like this can happen like right now the panel is 3000 watts but based on the current sunlight it can produce only 9000 watts. So in this situation if there is a battery it can take power from battery. Right now I have ordered battery also. Right now it has the same situation it's taking around 1.5 kilowatt from inverter but you can see there is no issue with restart because it has the battery support it's taking around 30 ampere from battery based on the current sunlight situation uh, we can just add more load and we can try to find out whether it's uh, taking load from solar or it's restarting i'm just adding more load uh, gradually adding more load uh, right now it's around 2.7 kilowatt we can add a little bit more right now getting around 2 kilowatt from solar previously we got only 9000 watts right now it's getting 2 kilowatt the, uh, this is the situation that i have discussed uh, right now from battery it's getting the extra energy that's why it's not restarting and it's continuing to operating as normal right now it's working with one open world submersible motor and uh, one induction cooker uh, I will just add one more induction cooker uh, to this load uh, so that two induction cookers and one motor will uh, run on this inverter so we can just see the details on screen uh, right now it's around 3.5 kilowatt when adding one more load it will be more than uh, 4 kilowatt anyway there is no need of checking whether it's capable to handle 5 or 6 kilowatt because it's rated for 6.2 kilowatt right now it's showing 4.78 kilowatt from inverter uh, 2 kilowatt from solar the remaining power is taken from the battery you can see from the battery it's taking around 62 ampere uh, and right now it's uh, loaded with 4.84 kilowatt and 74 percentage of this inverter load now we can reduce the load and we can move to the next options like uh, wi-fi monitoring and then the waveform of this inverter and all these things this is a user's manual that comes with the inverter wi-fi dongle uh, we need to download Smart ESS app from Play Store or App Store based on your mobile operating system. We need to use this cable to connect the Wi-Fi adapter because uh, we have to connect this with RJ45 cable. Uh, here it's a DB9 connector. So it will be doing the conversion from RJ45 to this serial connection. We just need to connect that uh, Wi-Fi adapter like this. Now we need to look at the manual for how we need to install or configure this Wi-Fi adapter. We just need to, after connecting, we just need to configure the Wi-Fi SSID and password. Please note that it will support only 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi connections. If you have 5G only, then it will be a problem because most of the IoT devices will not work with 5 GHz Wi-Fi connections. This manual already clearly specifies everything, so I am not going in detail with all these things. We can just connect on uh, this Wi-Fi port. Uh, there is one more port which is BMS we don't need that for now that will be connected for BMS communication lithium battery communication now I have just connected uh, to the Wi-Fi port because both ports are similar so please make sure that you have connected to Wi-Fi port that RS232 in this Wi-Fi adapter you can see two lights are stable and now we just need to connect with Wi-Fi uh, we need to provide the SSID and password of 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi
for that we just need to use our mobile phone and just connect with this wi-fi then we need to do all these things this is the app that we are using to connect uh, smart ESS. We have already covered this in a previous video, so I am not going in that much detail. I have already installed and logged in. Right now, only one inverter is connected to this app, that's why it's showing only one inverter. When clicking on this inverter, we can see the parameters. Uh, here, this will be the main interface. Here, you can see the diagram how the energy is flowing uh, from solar or battery or to the home. It can show seven items in that bottom area. Uh, click on the data settings to change those things. If needed, we can change these values by clicking the data settings, then select the value. If you are selecting more than seven items, it will say an error just like this. Uh, we can maximum seven items are allowed, so we cannot go beyond that. If you are interested in a specific uh, thing like battery or grid or solar, just click on that icon, it will show the respective uh, item. Right now I have selected solar, we can just move to battery or grid. Right now grid is not connected, that's why it's not showing anything related to grid. Now we can go to chart and see the daily production and usage graph. If we are going to the next one, that is month, uh, we will see the daily production. Uh, we can just click on each graph to see what will be the daily production. Uh, we can also see the monthly production with the help of that year option. When we are going to yearly, it will show the monthly production. When we are selecting monthly, it will show the daily production. If you want to zoom it a little bit, actually we can just use pinch to zoom option. Uh, it will just show like this. This inverter also support lithium battery communication. If the communication is not successful, it will show like this. We can just see all this data by pressing down arrow. Right now, I am using LIB mode on uh, battery settings 5. Here, we just need to change uh, to lithium mode. Here, you can see it's uh, showing 0 ampere. This 48 volt is just for the rated battery voltage. After playing with this inverter a bit time, I found that uh, it cannot communicate with battery ID 0. So, we just need to change settings number 49 to 43. Only then it will take first battery data and it will show the details. I will show those details in a moment. Uh, just uh, you can see that now it's showing all these details. It's showing 53.6 volt and 94 percentage. These things are coming from battery communication. This 461 ampere that it has been shown just because of an issue with JK firmware. Uh, I, I was using 15.35 uh, I believe. On that firmware there was a problem with Pylontech protocol that's why it's showing like this. After updating that was been fine. Uh, we can also verify these details against uh, JKBMS mobile app. Make sure that you have selected Pylontech protocol for inverter communication. Only then it will properly communicate. Also the battery ID to 1. Uh, right now on mobile app uh, we can see 53.67 volt and 5 ampere. This is just to show that actually these details are getting from communication because actually all values are correct as per the mobile app and then this inverter. Here on the inverter, uh, it will also show the same values. Just press the down arrow to see the communication details. Also, it will help to scroll between the items that are showing on the screen. Uh, now we can uh, check how we need to. What are things we need to check? First one, we need to change the uh, settings number five to LIL. This is battery type. Battery type to LIL. Then on uh, battery, select Pylontech. Then we need to change the 49 to 43. This 49 is the battery ID selection. 43 means first battery. This is the way they are doing. Actually here you can see on the dip switch I have selected as battery ID 1. The first dip switch is only on, others are off. We just need to do a DIY cable, only then we can communicate with uh, inverter. Uh, we cannot use normal LAN cable. Just crimp a cable, just like uh, showing on the screen. We just need to take 1, 2 and 8. Now we can see the waveform of this inverter. This is just a portable oscilloscope. Uh, it, it can handle only one signal. Uh, for our purpose, it will be fine. We just need to use a 10x probe. That's it. Now I have just connected this probe. And when I am turning on the uh, supply, you can see the waveform on this screen. Uh, right now, we are, what we need is a pure sine waveform as expected. We can we are getting a pure sine waveform. If we want to see the data, just press and hold on that run button. Using this run button, uh, we can see the additional parameters. You can see 
the additional parameters are showing the main advantage of using off grid is we will get a pure sine wave like this because when uh, doing in uh, grid interactive mode uh, we cannot guarantee that we will get a stable pure sine wave form i will show those details in a moment uh, first we can check uh, how it's working in solar mode then uh, battery mode but then solar plus battery and then also at bypass mode so we can directly see how we'll, we will get the waveform when working on bypass mode uh, right now we are getting a proper sine wave mode on the solar plus battery mode as you can see uh, we are getting a pure sine wave form as expected then i have mainly purchased this device uh, to check an inverter that is purchased from alibaba uh, we got some uh, issues so to verify that i have purchased this one if you are interested in those things uh, just let me know in comment i will update that uh, right now this inverter is working on battery only mode uh, solar is disconnected and uh, grid is also disconnected then we can check how we are getting the waveform in grid mode in a moment uh, when it's working on grid mode we can see that there is a problem with waveform like most power grids uh, they cannot provide a perfect pure sine waveform due to several factors like uh, non linear load or industrial equipment uh, usages or uh, also modern electrical equipments like uh, led drivers or other motor controllers smbs uh, and all these things will make some harmonic distortions to the grid uh, so if we need a pure sine wave foam we will need to use a ups or something like that that's the main advantage of going with off grid systems